up? What up? Welcome to the No Life Tech Show. Remember that No Life Gaming airs on Tuesday nights, uh, and this airs on Fridays. So you're watching this right now on Friday. We air this a little bit earlier in the week. Um, so some of the stories, by the time you hear them, you might have heard them before, but that's just how we do things here. We've been at, on break for quite some time now. It feels like, what, two weeks? One... Yeah, it's been about two weeks since the, our last show. Our last show was the 18th, so um, there really wasn't much news anyway in terms of technology in the last two weeks other than some Apple news, which we will touch on in a little bit later. <clears throat> other than that, um, we've really just been getting back into the swing of things. Uh, we got a lot of CES coverage to talk about today because CES it's starting to jump off right about now, and there's a bunch of cool new products that we want to talk about. Then we have a deep topic for you that will touch a little bit on gaming. Uh, also, the Golden Globes were yesterday. We're going to touch a little bit on that, and that will be pretty much it for the tech portion of No Life Show. Um, also, don't forget to head over to our Twitch and our Twitter at No Life Digital and our Instagram at No Life Digital. Uh, our website. I know you guys are probably laughing. Websites should be up soon. I just haven't really, um, I just haven't really gotten to it yet. I've been a little bit sick the last week of break, and the week before that was Christmas and all that stuff. So I do want to spend some, like a good few days on it, tighten up the screws, and then release it to you guys. That way, I can start to funnel a lot of my content to this website. And what you'll see is the way that I funnel the content to the website it'll be spread across all my other projects as well. So whenever I upload something, whether it be related to technology, uh, gaming, anything in those spaces, uh, also media, um, it'll just automatically pop up on No Life, it'll pop up on YouTube, it'll pop up on Twitter, on Instagram. So as long as you're following us somewhere, you'll be able to get all of the updates on No Life. Uh, and it's really just a matter of figuring out how to put those screws together, how to align those things so it just happens seamlessly. And that way, the other guys who are part of the show, when they upload stuff, it's easy for them to do so. If there's a new story that they want to talk about, they can quickly just put it up and then it automatically gets uploaded to all our social media as well. That way, you know, sometimes it's difficult for, for others who, do, who aren't very back end savvy to kind of put up content and stuff. So I want to make it as easy as possible for them. Luckily, these days, uh, with WordPress and the way a lot of these apps work, as long as you pay a couple bucks, I mean, they make it pretty easy. I just haven't really put it together. Now, you can see a lot of these stories are old. I have a few new stories that I want to put up anyway, but we'll keep you updated on that. Let's jump into the show. What is up, everyone? How are you guys doing? How was your winter breaks? Yeah, it's been normal, cold. No, today was warm. Dude, today was how really warm. cold is it by you? Uh, most of last week was averaging about negative six degrees. Oh my God. Is that like actual temperature or feels like temperature? No, that was actual temperature. Feels like was getting to closer, like negative 20, negative 12. Oh my God. How do you live like that? Uh, inside That's and, uh, <laughs> lots of carbs and beer and you just yeah. don't go outside. That's crazy. Dude, it, cause it's been then cold to, well, in Philly, but not that cold. Well, and then today it's it's in the forties. Yeah, but today is warm here too. It, it actually started raining just before, and there's like ice everywhere because we just got some snow. Uh, so like Kate fell on the sidewalk. Ooh. I almost busted my ass just getting coffee. It's pretty crazy. Dude, the there. rain the rain hitting my windshield turned straight to fucking ice. Really, Doobie? I don't think yeah. you're using your uh, your blue microphone, by the way. Yeah. Ah, let me check. Your microphone, not. yeah, your microphone sounds a little, <laughs> little fuzzy. Um, yeah, but it, it's been, it's been cold on the East Coast, but I can only imagine how much cold. Cause like when we were looking at the weather stuff, like Mount Pocono and stuff like that, it was like negative two, negative five highs. So I can only imagine up by you, dude. It just probably gets fucking is that, freezing. Is this better? Yeah, yeah. That's much better. Oh uh, yeah, it was selected to the friggin' webcam. Yeah, yeah I remember. I remember we're doing stopgap last week and I just hold my phone up showing everyone it's negative seven. <laughs> like that's just that welcome to the weather. <laughs> oh, fucking I hate the winter, dude. It's the worst. I'm hate just it. glad it's warming up as I'm going on vacation. Yeah. True. Like it's supposed to be like fifty six on like Thursday or Friday while I'm yeah. in Virginia. Yeah, it's supposed it's to warm great. up a little bit. I mean it's Short warm sweating. right now. I was just when I went to get coffee, I usually like bundle all the way up. And I really just brought my jacket and I was fine. 
So you know, was the, the wind was the killer. Yeah, it got cold, that man. Wind, man, was just like today was no wind. It wasn't that bad, but like Friday. Oh yeah, if you got cold and wind, oh, no, just yeah. takes the breath right out of you. Yeah. I mean, it's to the point where you're just like, I don't want, I can't, I don't want to go outside. I don't want to walk my dog. I don't want to have to go get fucking eggs and milk and shit. It sucks. All right. Anyways. Um, we just, uh, you, you invest heavily into Amazon Prime. That's all I'm saying. Got a know, Whole Foods I, near you. You get fresh delivered to you same day and that's how you live, dude. I have that too. I have the Whole Foods right down the street. I'll have a Prime account and I barely use it. I need to really start using my Prime a lot more. At least Dude, in the I, winter, is all I'm saying. I bought a new hat, and I'm like, yeah, it's, it's a nice hat. I got it on Duluth, like trading, like one of those, like a really nice thick hat. It's warm, and I suffer the same problem every hat I buy. It just my head always itches after like a half hour. <laughs> it's I yeah. can't stand it. You just have to just power through it, man. You'll get used to it soon. Like right, right here too. Yeah, you start getting the itchies. Yeah. I, get, yeah, I used to have know. that, but after you wear a hat long enough, you kind of just forget about it. Um, did you guys get anything cool over, over Christmas break? Did you guys get hooked up at all? Uh, $300, uh, I got a $300 GameStop gift card. So, uh, word. Bunch of games paid off, which means content for the site. <laughs> Especially Dragon Ball Fighters. <laughs> when is that coming out? See that what you should do, though. End of this month. But I will have footage for the YouTube and for our site. Uh, the demo straight from AGDQ's arcade. I will be having a record footage as long as they let me have that on my phone. And the open beta is this upcoming weekend. And I'll be recording footage of that as well. See, what you should do is instead of that, spend all of that money and one gigantic, beautiful purchase along with an extra $100 and get an Oculus Rift and join us in VR chat. <laughs> V, I mean, I have the graphics card to handle VR now. I mean, anyone has the I, graphics card to handle running. VR chat. <laughs> I, don't, I, have any, I don't, I have seen well, yeah, VR yeah. chat. I have not looked into it at all. Dude, it's oh. free. It's worth it. Try Is it. Is it a meme? Well, yeah. Oh, it's beautiful. I just uploaded a video to the YouTube. You should check it out later. It's everything you the, wish. The only thing we're going to talk that about it. That Knuckles picture. Yeah, we're going to talk about it in the gaming section, but it is. It spawned a, a meme is what spawned the popularity of the game. It's like you'll see, you'll see what we're talking about. Oh man! Other than that, it's really nothing much. There's there's no gameplay really. <laughs> no, no, this it. Yeah, we'll get into it. All right, so uh, the Golden Globes were yesterday. Uh, no one really cares about that, but it did spawn a couple memes. Or I should just say one meme, really. First the off, Tommy best. Was one? Yeah, the timing was so, <laughs> so good. It, it's so, so funny. It's just so cool. Seeing him up on the stage at the Golden Globes for him, it was probably just amazing. Yeah, it's his dream, basically. It's his fucking dream, <laughs> dude. Man. It's proof. If you make a thing so bad that it becomes good, and somebody who has power decides to dedicate something to that, that person might win an award that you get to walk on stage with them for. <laughs> Jay, Jay Franco is, is he's like the more successful. More handsome, more talented Tommy Wiseau. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right. Well, what happened was is th that he won Best Actor for um, The Disaster Artist. And the meme was like Tommy Wiseau was on stage. Amazing. But he tried to like grab the mic and talk into the mic. And everyone was like, oh, man, why did James Franco stop him from talking to the mic? Dude, you can't let Tommy Wiseau talk on a mic because he won't stop. You know what Dude, I mean? Dude, what would have been better? Anyone who knows Tommy Wiseau Award. knows he won't stop. Dude, the game, the guy from the Game Awards, you know, the, the fuck the Oscars guy, or Tommy Wiseau on the mic. That would have been... Oh, Tommy Wiseau, hands oh down. My God, just the two of them together? I want the two of them now together. <laughs> I mean, he's basically the same guy. I'm that guy convinced. needs to make a game with Tommy Wiseau as the main character. <laughs> no, dude, I just want Tommy Wiseau at the Golden Globes explaining how exactly he sold imported Korean leather jackets and heavy detail to fund this movie. That's all <laughs> That's I want in my life. From. He'll never tell you, dude. It's just the part of the mystery of the Wiseau man. 
Does anyone know how old he is? Like, is his age even known? No, no, no one still knows how old he is, where he's yeah. from, what his accent is, nothing. Yeah. The it, biggest mystery in all of Hollywood. I don't even think Tommy Wiseau knows. I want to so, see this you know. movie. I haven't seen this movie yet, but now I definitely want to see it. Um, especially not knowing that he won Best Actor, because I, I was afraid that the acting was going to be kind of cheesy. Bad. Yeah, I mean, like yeah. the trailers, it looks pretty good, but those are trailers. You know, you can't really, you got to get into the subtleties. But yeah, I mean, one best actor, you're, the Golden Globes. James you know? Franco went full on character, like went full on like, what, what is it called? Uh, uh, method acting for it, really. Like he totally took on Wiseau's personality for it. Yeah. And Do you think that's that's you have to almost for that because like, I mean, that's the more impressive part is you won an award for a movie based on a cult hit movie yeah a movie like the worst movie ever yeah but like it's it's a it's a cult hit so if you do anything wrong it just becomes a terrible movie because the fan base is going to rip it apart i think it is essentially this it's like and i've seen you know i'm a huge rocky horror fan so i really do like i know that cult community i know what they do how they operate like the midnight showings all of the traditions the room is the like, three million call outs dude the rocky R has it the room has it like these are things that cult movies have and i feel like i don't want to say like the room you know if it wasn't for the the success like that cult status that rocky Horror really set up for it that the room wouldn't have it but like it's you don't get a lot of movies like that that a tr- that get that kind of cult status yeah I mean, The Room is just such a, it's such a unique movie and how it's really nothing about the movie. It's about what the, how did this even get made? How did this movie, this production get made and how am I watching it right now? Like it's, it's everything else around the movie that makes it so interesting. And And then it's also, it's just the quotes. It's like the most quotable movie ever. It's definitely quotable. I definitely have breast cancer. (laughs) And I think, like, dude, I, the running, the, just the running, the one liner that no, lead nowhere, you know, like the dandy drugs. Yeah. <laughs> or just how, like, they'll just, like, just like Throw all of a sudden there's just like a sex scene. Like, there's no yeah. dialogue before, it's just sex. Where scene. he's just having sex with her belly button. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I dude, think, the, the I think the movie, all, all the pictures, yeah, all the pictures of spoons, the f- <laughs> throwing footballs around everywhere, tuck in tuxedos for the flower no reason. Shop. That is straight up overdubbed. For the the chicken know. bullshit. The cheap, cheap, cheap. <laughs> cheap, 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 cheap. Um, but I think the movie, God. like the 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 disaster artist, the movie. Um, the reason why it did so well is because they had such great source material with the book, the disaster artist, which is what the the dude wrote, Greg Sotero, who was there uh, at the Golden Globes. And when they panned the camera to him, you could tell he was just like holy shit this is fucking this is crazy you know what i mean like i'm actually here at the golden clothes and tommy Wiseau is on stage this is insane and it looked like he was because of a I book mean, i wrote not yeah. to mention, like, <laughs> you gotta imagine he's he made a good deal on those like selling the rights to the movie to james franco yeah oh yeah yeah i'm pretty sure he helped with it too yeah so like his even his i guess you could say failed career is now a successful career oh yeah Dude, I want to know well, like where the best out of any situation. I want to know like where they can go from here. Like this Tommy Wiseau, can he? Can oh, this is it. Is this is the pinnacle. It? This is this is the top. I would love <laughs> to see him like, going on tours of just like college campuses. No, I don't want to see that. I want to see Tommy Wiseau He's disappear. Kevin Smith, man. He's got to disappear for a good 10, 15 years, and he needs to just release another movie. That the room is, prequel that just he just wants to release movies and yeah it, i don't know if it's another room or if it's like a different story but he's got to act in it he's got to direct and everything and i don't want him to be fun be funded at all he has to do all the funding <laughs> it's the only way we'll get another good sequel but it was cool seeing him on stage i think a lot of people were upset because they wanted to hear tommy like he like he was trying to grab the mic <laughs> on james franco's acceptance speech but I, you just can't I, I, let I him talk surprised. man I wouldn't be surprised if Franco starts putting him as cameos in his movies going forward. Though. Oh, that would that would be a good way to kind of like how like Seth Rogen, like you know the the crew that like Seth Rogen and Franco, and then you have all the other people in that whole crew that show up in all the movies. Yeah, 
but that would be hilarious. Yeah. So like a five line cameo, and I'm good in every movie. Yeah. No, dude. Even, I, no, don't don't even give them lines. I think would be better. Just like ha- like if there's ever a subway scene, he's just randomly on the subway. Just things like that. Just have him hiding in the background. Yeah. Oh hi. That's it. I mean, maybe they should have talked before they got the award and be like, "All right, Tommy, you can say like one word, and that's it." But then, yeah. uh, can you trust Wizzo? No. Like <laughs> he would have gone on a crazy. Rant. I mean, that have you ever have you ever so seen good. his Machinima series? No. Nah. Because if you didn't know, Tommy Wizzo has a Machinima series of him playing video games in a spaceship set up like uh, MS3K. I have not seen that. It's <laughs> dude. He has yeah. He has Twitch now. Like he he has a Twitch. Maybe that's where he goes. Maybe Dude, that's where he, he could goes. be. He could be a Twitch star. Yeah. Oh, for certain, people would donate like crazy to him. Are you kidding Maybe me? That's his. That's his way in, dude. He's got to start yeah. on quit on Twitch. You're gonna see him on Kickstarter in three years. Guarantee it. <laughs> I need a new Twitch computer. <laughs> dude, he's, right. gonna, he's on. He's on social media now. Like, it's it's not a, a, I might go oh, fund me. Trying to film more movie. <laughs> All right, well, um, other than that, there was a couple other wins. Best Actress was the um, Elizabeth Moss, I think her name is, uh, from Handmaid's Tale. Have you guys seen Handmaid's Tale? It's a nah. Hulu show. I have not watched it. I know the premise. It sounds really uh, cool. It's fucking awesome. It. It's such a good show. It's Kate's like favorite show. She, she fucking loves that show. Um, it's really good. I highly recommend. I know it's, like, it's weird because not a lot of people have Hulu. Um, but it's worth it, man. It's worth just buying Hulu uh, for the month just to watch that show. Now might be the time to start thinking about Hulu if you don't. I don't know if you've heard the news. I don't want to interject here. But speaking of Hulu, um, not only did Hulu get the rights to broadcast the old Animaniacs, Ren and Stimpy. I don't know, they get, no, they didn't get Ren and Stimpy. I'm sorry. Animaniacs, Pinky in the Brain, and um, there was another one from Spielberg. And they also announced they're bringing back Animaniacs for two seasons, and probably 2020, but still. Animaniacs is coming back to Hulu. Are you an Animaniacs fan? I am a... Is, as long as they bring back the original cast, like the voice cast, and the writers, I'm in. Yeah. I wasn't a big Animaniacs, Animaniacs fan. One of the best shows in the 90s. I wasn't the biggest fan of Animaniacs. I guarantee you, go back and watch it now. Because there's a lot of jokes that like flew by kids' heads that were there for adults. Yeah, I mean, you it was think, early. You think 90s. it'll do well when it comes back? Like I said, as long as the original writing cast and the voice cast come back, because there's no way you can recast Yakko, Wacko, and Dot. There's just no way you can. But do people buy Hulu for Animaniacs? I don't know. There if they will, will. There, I guarantee you, nostalgia will sell, and people will subscribe for it. Yeah, to fucking Hulu. Yeah, I think if it was something other than Hulu, they would. But the fact that it's anyone who's ever used Hulu. It's such a bad app. Yeah. It'd be like, you can put put anything on Hulu and I'm going to sit there and be like, hey, cool. I'm I'm still not going to watch this. I don't know why Netflix didn't throw the money at it, but they should have. I mean, I've, I have Hulu for free. I've had it for like over a year. I've wa- I've used it to watch South Park. Yeah, I dude. For That's one, it. Just the, the newest season. I've used it like eight. I've used it like five times in a year and a half. Grab that off of Comedy Central or South Park's website. Yeah, but the reason why Hulu sucks is like it doesn't it doesn't carry like all of the shows. Like it just carries like three shows or not not three shows, but like three episodes from a show. So and like, if it oh, doesn't, cool. it just says, hey, it's coming soon for this show we don't have rights to, but we're going to put it on our network anyways because we'll eventually maybe get it. And the, app, too many, the app's terrible. Too many subscription the, services. The live TV Hulu app is terrible. It's The live <laughs> TV app it was the worst experience ever. Uh, and, and then you can still pay the same amount as Netflix and still have ads. Do you but know what the worst Handmaid's is? Tale, Handmaid's CBS Tale is, is highly recommend. I highly recommend Handmaid's Tale. You need... It's such a good show. I wish they would take it off of Hulu, but it seems like they got it. I, if anything, if you that. get Hulu, you got to watch. It's a must because it's such CB, a good show. CBS All I'll try. the worst streaming service. CBS? They, they threw up. Yeah, they threw up. Like They aired one episode of the new Star Trek on CBS. And then they were like, 
yeah, we're going to make it, a, you know, an only CBS, you know, all access, our online streaming service you have to pay for to watch like Star Trek and whatever shows. Uh, and they also have commercials. Yeah. They have more yeah. commercials than show You're on a service you pay for. Yeah, that's Hulu also. But yeah, like it's it, awful. That's, that's the problem with the a cable network trying to make their own version. No who's one's going to subscribe to a cable network. Who's yeah. Hulu owned by NBC? No, they're owned by uh, Disney now, partially. Well, uh, it's partially, yeah. Yeah, they're like the main, the main owner now, Disney. But too Hulu's many still like their own thing. You can't do it. Like, I just want my Netflix, and that's about it. Yeah, but that's not going to happen. Look at TV, dude. Look at where TV went after all these years. The same thing's going to happen to streaming. It's just, there's nothing you can do about it. Everyone wants a piece of that pie. There's all all kinds of eyes. Netflix is on this fucking winning streak, and they got a lot of momentum behind them. But that's gonna that's not gonna. This is like the golden age of TV, and then pretty soon you're gonna see like all different types of deals. Streaming still isn't like in terms of like ratings and in terms of like music and stuff, like they still haven't worked out exactly how people get paid through per stream. Is it per thousand streams? Is it this, is it that? Once they work all that out, trust me, it's going to be fucked up. You're going to have 20 different streaming apps. Every channel you're going to want to watch is going to have its own streaming app. Once bandwidth starts to increase and people have faster uh, like 5G speeds on their phones, then they're going to implement other costs on top of that. It's just going to get worse and worse. Just, so just, just enjoy it now. Netflix. Enjoy Sorry, that there's only so like shows. enjoy there's only Netflix and Hulu now and Amazon. Amazon is is the worst too, dude. Oh fuck. There's so many good I shows. I think Amazon's on Amazon. way better than Hulu, dude. At no, Amazon's Amazon. way better than Hulu. Yeah, but you can't Amazon included with Prime. No, but you can't sh- cast Amazon. It's the worst. You can't dude. cast it, but if you have like a Roku or anything other than Google Chrome or like other than a Chromecast, it's great. I yeah. do agree with you. If you have a Chromecast, it fucking sucks. Because I have a Chromecast in my bedroom and then a Roku out here. And like, uh, out here it's great, but yeah. And that's the thing we're going to talk about too. Is the whole Amazon versus Google thing. Welcome to that hellhole. Yeah. Yeah. Also, by the way, Amazon, you can, you can though go fuck yourself for only allowing the Fire TV, the worst streaming service ever, to be the only thing that can now uh, stream Twitch. Mm. That's it. Yeah, dude. Amazon, they need to fix their everything. You can stream Twitch, but you can't stream YouTube. And then on Chromecast, you can stream YouTube, but you can't stream Twitch. And it's just like, it, I mean, it's not Amazon's fault. It's not Google's fault. It's just they don't, they think that they, they just don't they care about the They think they can bully each other. Yeah. They don't, they don't care about the consumer. It's not the consumer yeah. who wins. It's, they just want to, like the whole thing happened with the VP9, with Apple and Google with VP9. And that's why Safari can't get 4K. It's the same thing with the, with the uh, Amazon devices not being able to use the YouTube services. It's just, it, it becomes just like this codec war. That no one cares about, dude. We just want to watch our fucking streaming things on whatever TV that we have. You know, if I buy a Roku, let me fucking get everything I want on it. If I buy a Chromecast, let let, let everything work on it. But unfortunately, like I said, it's just going to get worse from here, man. Good old uh, compatibility wars. Oh, look who it yeah. is. Yeah, look who it is. That's a lot of man. Do I know? Del, by the way, did you get anything new for Christmas this year? Did I get anything new for Christmas? Anything uh, cool? Anything new? Cool? Uh, not really. Uh, French press. Finally hey, got press. there you go. Use that shit every morning. I love my yeah. French press. Dude, I use that shit every morning. Get some nice beans in there. Get that, um, get that like little four inch pour. Let it sit in there. Let it froth up. Get all those gases to release. Fill it up. Push it down. A little sip, sip, little hazelnut cream, cream. A L- little uh, just gotta do that French press cold brew. <laughs> just gotta leave that last little bit of the cup in the bottom and not drink all of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you don't want to get hit with that sludge, you know what I mean? Dude, oh, yeah. dude, the well, do you do you have a grinder? Do I have a grinder? Well, of what yeah. con made? <laughs> oh God, dude, get a. <laughs> all I'm saying is get a burr grinder, set that shit to course for French press. You're golden. Never have to worry about that sludge anymore because it's the sludge is from it being ground too finely. And definitely don't buy a yeah. hand grinder. <laughs> so yeah. I bought one. Everyone's like, you got to hand grind your coffee beans. Dude, it takes 45 minutes to make one cup of coffee with a grinder. Uh, hand, yeah. hand grinders are fantastic. 
for travel. That That's sounds it. like it's like <laughs> legit hipster shit. Oh, it's stupid. Yeah, just no, grind it. Yeah, just grind it. A little like, hand burr grinder. They they do make a good grind, but it's way too much effort. They're great for travel because you can throw it in a backpack, and if you're leaving, cool. Otherwise, fuck that. It's fuck like, that just, shit. Or just grind it the night before. It's yeah. like I'm, I'm watching a video. It's like I'm watching a video, and the guy with these thick. Well, I mean, I can't really say anything, but these thick black. Yeah, welcome to the hipster world, loco. With like a a beanie and shit is just oh. like tell me tell me about how it's like you know to get the optimal coffee you have to <laughs> hand grind it at one quarter turn per 30 seconds yeah that's what it is at you a, gotta <laughs> at, a, at a steady rate you cannot go any faster or go any slower it brings out 15 it brings out listen, listen here Listen here, as a former barista, okay, <laughs> I have a French press, a Chemex, a V60 pour over, a burr grinder, a manual burr grinder, and, and you press. have to use the manual burr grinder for the best grind of the beans. I used to be a barista. But yeah, other than that, I just got like <laughs> fucking you know, like shit I needed, like, you know, cooking stuff and uh like Brie got me a couple of things, stuff like that. Oh, so. dude, I got these smart wool socks. Have you guys heard of Smart Wool? Smart Wool. Nope. If you no. live in a cold yeah, place, the, check them out. Sounds like sounds like a dumbass thing, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, dude, they they are so cozy on them toesies. Uh, anyways, let's get into tech news. Is that the tagline? <laughs> no, oh, by the way, but that's my tagline. I got these things because I figured why not. Uh, check them out. They're the status OB ones. Actually, they're pretty fucking good for fifty bucks. I mean, they look nice. IPhone, something no, nice. they're. I would put these in. Um, the closest pair of headphones I've used to these, I'd say, is like one fifties, like ATX one fifties, and I bought these things for like fifty five bucks. They're normally seventy or eighty. That's not bad. They're actually really nice for the price for closed back headphones. Yeah, they look good too. Sometimes cheap headphones look like shit. Um. All right. Here's here's the big story that we missed over the week. When we were on our little tiny break there. Apple, yes, we're slowing down older iPhones. And this caused a lot of controversy in the news. Uh, what happens is they they implement this like service into their phone. When your battery starts to degrade, it slows down, throttles your CPU, so it doesn't just completely just shut off. Where some phones, I guess, shut off when the battery is uh, worked to a point that it can no longer up, uh, hold that that same level of voltage to the CPU. So what Apple did was just slow them down a little bit so over time so that you can get a little bit more life out of your battery. The problem was they never told anyone, so people always suspected, is Apple slowing down my phone to get me to buy a new phone? And in my opinion, that's what exactly what they did. They slowed your phone down to make you buy a new phone, and that's why I didn't tell you. If they would have told you, then you could have just went and gotten a new battery or a new phone. Like it, it, you would have at least had the choice, you know, do I want to get a new phone or should I just upgrade the battery? My phone's fine. Now everyone knows it. And I guarantee you, Apple sales are definitely going to be impacted, especially now uh, where they came back and they said, hey, for 30 bucks, if you find that your battery has reached a certain point, I think it's only after the six, uh, then we'll replace your battery for 30 bucks and you, your phone would pretty much be brand new again. I mean, and, that's and I guarantee you a, a lot of people are going to do that. Guarantee $30 a lot of battery gonna charges? Hell yeah. Yeah, man. And that's like a whole brand new battery. You're going to get it at least another year out of it. You know. Well, I think they also had to because they instantly also got hit with at least five class action lawsuits. So Yeah. And I wonder how many are going to stick, how many they're going to lose. I don't think they really, I don't think it's going to affect them at all in terms of like profitability in their company but um it's, it's it might just... though because if the the thing with that though is how many there were it will set a precedent that like they can't withhold information like that anymore because <clears throat> the like it sets it. the precedent yeah that's the best because like that's it. that totally sets that precedent because if you do someone else does that down the road like their lawsuit becomes eight thousand times worse mm -hmm. yeah they definitely should have told people uh, what they did was it was a smart move. I mean, you definitely don't want your phone to just shut off. You know, you definitely want like a slower. You just kind of. I rather have a slower phone than a phone that just shuts off periodically. Uh, so that's kind of the, the the good thing about it. It just they should have just fucking told you or had some type of like thing where you press it and you're like, okay, 
instead of slowing down my CPU, then just shut it off, you know, like a, like a certain option in the settings or something. But that's kind of not how Apple does things. Yeah. So I think, I think an option like that, the, what, what is the turnoff point though? That's like the question for me. Cause like, it sounds like some, I didn't read it that in depth, but some of them are making it sound like if your phone's a year and a half old, like they're just going to throttle the hell out of it regardless of how good the battery is Yeah, I think at that was, point. I think it was and just like, like a year. I think it just, yeah, if just it's a just year. a year, that's fucking absurd. Yeah. Okay. Well, like I don't, I don't battery, exactly do batteries do, do degrade, it. but like, Hey dude, I'm not spending a thousand fucking dollars for my $1,000 phone to last a fucking year. Like that's yeah, well, absurd. That's, that is the problem with these phones. They need to start implementing uh, like modular to like b- at least the battery. Like allow me to swap my battery out. Like you used to I be want, able to do. <laughs> yeah, because I want a, a phone that lasts longer than a year. At least <laughs> at least a little longer than a year. You know, I'm not trying to buy a new phone every year. Like I love this iPhone 8. And when it comes down to it, I'm probably not going to upgrade it until maybe I have to get a new battery. I might do like a new battery and then get it after that. I'm not sure, but I don't, I don't want to have to worry about that shit. You know, that's the, that's the most frustrating thing is the battery. So until we get new battery technology, I don't know what the actual answer is because these phones are getting smaller and smaller, just compromising on the same, like batteries have, haven't really advanced. Maybe, maybe, you know, you could like, (laughs) instead of making your phone super, super, super tiny, you could just put a decent sized battery in there and have it last a couple of years, you know, just saying. Man, I wish it's just a, a, a wish, controversial idea. I know. I wish we. Could, <laughs> I wish I could like make my own phone. You know. What I, I mean? know. It's just like you. You see this thing called logic. I know it's a controversial idea. Like, hey, dude, if the battery's dying too fast, add more. It yeah. doesn't have to be like, a, a you know, a millimeter thin. Or just like, hot swap a battery. Or like, yeah. even if I gotta unscrew like one screw and take it apart. Like, let Shit, dude, if you want it, if you if you want your phone as thin as possible, just like design a phone with Mophie in mind. Say like, cool, dude, we're designing a phone without a battery and it's just a replaceable battery pack that attaches to the back. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. It's it's stupid because I do want like smaller phones. Like I like I like small phones, but our, the battery technology just isn't getting any better right now. And right. It's it's getting more expensive. And I don't know what the answer is. So who knows? Anyways, that was old news. Uh, I know a lot of people thought they were like, I don't know. There was a lot of misinformation going on around about it, but who cares? CES news. All right. So now we're getting into the new CES stuff. There's a ton of cool products coming out. Let's talk about the LG 5K ultra wide HDR monitor uh, running off of display HDR 600, uh, which is like the new, I don't remember if you remember when we talked about like those new certifications for hdr this is like one of those new ones 600 nits peak brightness 32 inch 4k monitor 98 percent p3 color gamut meaning it's basically uh meant for like macbook mac uh I- mac os ios type of displays um hdr uh nano ips technology so it's really just an ips panel and then um that's their 4k option and then they have the 5k ultra wide which is uh 5K and then what's the inches on this? 34 inches on the 5K one. And then they're also releasing a 1440p G-Sync monitor that's at CES right now. So really LG is just rocking out with some like really high quality, just they're really meant for design and video editing, photo editing and stuff like that. Anytime you have like P3 color gamuts, that's like photography stuff, uh, videography Mm -hmm. stuff. So that's cool because I love, I love the LG the one they released, the 5K one for the MacBook, but there's a lot of people who had problems with it and I didn't want to buy one because I didn't want to have any of those problems. So it looks like they're finally upgrading their model and putting in some new ones. Plus I love the ultra wide. I'm, I'm on an ultra wide right now. I love like a nice, just single monitor, but the ultra wide gives you the best of both worlds. You know, you kind of have like, it's basically two big monitors, two standard four by three monitors put together, uh, which is easy on the graphics card. You know, you only have to run one display but you get like a nice little wideness to it so i'm I'm pumped on that one there's a bunch of monitors that have been released dude this is like the year of monitors <laughs> and tvs right now so far i'm pumped dude i love them all i love them all let's talk about the nvidia one then thanks to synergy for sponsoring uh, this, this video. Oops, sorry this is uh linus linus's video oh, okay 
<laughs> there were some articles on it, but yeah. No, dude, this thing is porn. Dude, okay. This thing is just porn. I need to find the, the tech specs for it while I play the video down below. Okay, or the article, because this thing is straight just porn. Even, oh, it's VA. Even still, if it's VA, that's like... Hey, dude, I'll take VA for right now until it takes a couple of years to get this into IPS. Yeah, well, when you have when you have um, that size and you're trying to push 120 hertz. Oh, you can't do it with IPS. No. Yeah, there's a lot of issues that, that are involved there. <laughs> well, that's like, I mean, I, I think it is funny in the comments. A bunch of people are like, oh, it's VA. Never buying that again. And I'm just like, dude, what do you think your TV is? <laughs> like unless your unless your TV's OLED, it's it, it's pretty much guaranteed VA. Yeah. So Nvidia is unveiling what it calls the BFGD, which is the Big Format Gaming Display, otherwise known as the Big Fucking Gaming Display, sixty five inches. Um, and uh, Acer, Asus, and HP will manufacturing them. Uh, it's got four K. It's got HDR. But the coolest thing about it is that it's a G Sync TV. So this is like one of the first 120 TVs. hertz G-Sync TV at 65 feet G-Sync. inches fucking ah. What's cool about this is that it's a TV. So someone like myself who wants to build um, a home theater PC to run all my PC games at home on my TV. Now I can do so at a silky G-Sync 120 hertz image, which is fucking awesome, man. At 4K with HDR. Yeah. Which it's, we finally have more HDR monitors coming out for computers, which is dope. And they're they're touting it as like the shield, uh, like the like to pair it up with your shield, which is no. a great idea too. No, I think it's a good well, idea, man. I think it's yeah. A good if idea. you if you were to cast it to the shield using their GeForce program, well, because I wouldn't, think, I would not take a K1 processor and just be like, yeah, dude, here's a fucking what <clears throat> 65 inch 4K 120 hertz and expect 120 frames I, out of I've, that. I have a shield and I was able to pump 4k image from my gaming pc to you have to be ethernet and you obviously can't do it over right that's what i was saying like if you're if you're pumping it from your gaming pc i can see that working yeah. but just running it off that fuck no 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 you definitely <laughs> it would definitely be like the game stream thing but it's awesome because you don't have to have a home theater pc you can just fucking cast it straight up to your uh, your shield which is cool yeah. and i think if you pair that with this tv that's pretty dope, but I think if you just go native, you get a home theater PC, you you hook it up to one of these motherfuckers, dude, you're living the life, man. Thousand nits of brightness, which is pretty cool. Uh, it's got uh, DCI-P3 color. Uh, I don't know what the percentage is. Stick it with oh, a 1080 Ti, yeah, dude. It's and got might... shield built in. Oh, really? Oh, That's dope. okay. That's yeah. fucking dope. Dude, stick it with a 1080 Ti and you can finally hit maybe 20 frames on PUBG. <laughs> that's fucking dope it's got the shield built in i didn't know that yeah this is cool so that's impressive shout out to nvidia i kind of want one if it's over three thousand dollars i won't be able to pick one up but if it's like 2500 might be my it might it might go in the room I'm not sure um now there's a yeah. rolling a roll-up tv I don't know if you guys have seen this. LG's display crazy 65 inch OLED TV that you can roll up like a poster. And they this is dope. new technology. This is sweet to me just because, okay, I move a lot. And the idea that I could get a decent TV that is, I mean, roll, roll upable makes it sound kind of gimmicky, but the idea that it, like, you know, you can have it rolled up in a, a box. Yeah. It's in a box and then you set it down and it will pop up and just work. But then when I want to move, I can just roll it up and then take it in a box. That's beautiful. That's or brilliant. You don't have to worry about it like breaking, you know, like yeah. falling and breaking. Uh, it's basically like this film. So the leader in big screen OLED manufacturing, not satisfied to debut the first 88 inch AK OLED TV, will show off another world's first at CES, a 65 inch 4K OLED display that's rollable. This is out of CNET. Um, now, uh, let's see. I want to know what the technology exactly is. Uh, let's see if we can figure it out here. Uh, even so, this ain't LG's displays first rollable TV rodeo at CES 2016. They saw the same concept in an 18-inch size. Oh, yeah, I remember that. It was like this little tiny thing. 
Um, the 18 inch OLED was tightly rolled into cone shape. It doesn't really tell you what the technology is. I guess it's just an OLED panel on like this special film. Yeah, the secret as usual is it's paper thin organic light emitting diode display. So it's, there's, they're able to display this OLED image onto like a certain type of film that powers the powers the display. I don't know how bright it gets. We don't know too much about it other than the fact that it rolls up, but it's pretty damn cool that I can just like imagine like all different types of use cases for it. So that's pretty dope. Were you just, uh, were you just whistling to your ears hang low? <laughs> yeah, sort of. <laughs> <laughs> I always whistle that for, for some reason. I don't know why. Do they wobble to and fro? They definitely do not. The real yeah, question, you know. though, is uh, do your chain hang low? <laughs> it definitely does. Do that's for sure. To and fro. <laughs> uh, Samsung just announced a 146-inch modular TV. So this is one of the first. They're calling it the wall. Uh, now, this is fucking dope. So what it is, it's like a modular TV. So you could put diff like a bunch of TVs together. And when you look at the image, you can't tell. Like it's just like it looks like one display, which is awesome. 4K. Uh, micro OLED so uh, instead of instead of what regular OLED is it's kind of like an array panel where you still need um, sort of like a power power source micro OLED they all individually light up it's sort of like OLED but the the LEDs are a lot smaller <clears throat> so it doesn't really it it doesn't really need like a back emitting like a like a full array uh, emission in the back um, and it's gigantic. Now, the reason why I think this is cool is because if you can have like a TV like the size of your wall, that's like a completely new thing like that consumers haven't really gotten into other than like kind of like big screen TVs. But still, it's not enough to like where you're standing in front of it and you can be in the scene, whether you're watching a movie or you're playing a game where it's like you kind of need to think about that before you make content for those type of TVs. You know what I mean? So like when someone makes a movie and they know what's going on the big screen, they cater all of their shots and their film for that. And now I think that's gonna work with television as well. And I think that just adds a different, I mean, we're still probably a few ways out, a few years out before a lot of people start getting TVs this size. But once it comes, man, Game of Thrones is gonna be dope. Uh, <laughs> Fuck Game of Thrones, man. Yeah, porn's gonna be dope. Did VR porn? That's the only way I watch uh, it. Now. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, dude. VR chat and VR porn is what I. Uh, what? Huh? <laughs> dude, you're obsessed with VR chat. <laughs> so good, dude. I don't <laughs> care. Oh, this is another cool monitor kind of thing. Asus can turn three screens into one seamless gaming display at an end gadget. So what this it seems is, interesting. Like, yeah. You guys know when you put like three displays, you kind of have those borders. Well, Asus is doing something where they like put like a, a specific type of lens in those corners and it makes it look like one display. Um, you know, it doesn't do it perfectly from what this image is showing. But yeah. It does it pretty good. It does it pretty good. It probably work better than just borders. The only problem I have with it that I could think of so far, other than image quality, obviously, and also how your mouse is going to act going over that. Um, oh, right how it, it the way it's set up it looks like it's it's a i mean it's a lens it's a piece of glass so it's only you're only gonna have your monitors at one spot you can only have them in this one position if you have like a two monitor three monitor setup yeah. instead of the other beautiful part of having multiple monitors set up is you can put one here and one over here you know you can put them wherever yeah i mean it's super niche there's not a lot of people that like uh, that want a three monitor setup, but one image across all of them. You know, usually they're just all separate. Uh, so but I, mean, I, I can see it for like racing sims. That's about it. Maybe I can see it for definitely some other people too. Just because I know some people are just aesthetic geeks and like they try as hard as they can, even in their own multiple monitor setups to have as minimal border as possible. Yeah, yeah I was about to say trying to hide that bezel is good. Yeah. No more I mean, that's, that's just a normal thing. Like, I can see that being huge if it actually works. Yeah. I, we, we don't know what the exact what it looks like exactly. We only just see, like, a rendered image here. But, I don't know. Hopefully, it works out well. In other news, there's another eight new segues uh, unveiled at CES today. Don't even want to talk about them. Don't <laughs> care about them. 
I fucking hate all that shit. Dude, the fucking boosted board is like, that's it. No, you don't need anything else. You but now you can get a play. version two of a boosted board that only has one giant wheel that you can kick with your feet. Don't want it. <laughs> no one wants that. Maybe Dude, I think China. that one's kind of cool. It. The one wheel thing idea is actually neat to me, but that's no, about it. That's it's the so, only one. Dude, just walk. You could just walk. Oh, yeah. I would. I normally just walk. I mean, one wheel seems cooler to me because that you can actually like, okay, just thinking physics wise, like one wheel, you could actually go around corners. That's my problem with skateboards and boosted boards, things like that is like you can do a long board route, but your actual turning radius is still going to be pretty large. Yeah, but if it's just one, one wheel, you could do like that. No. Nah, I don't know. No, fuck and, no. And like, like, are the the idea? If I win like, the lottery, maybe. The idea that's like, about it. Maybe like an airport is gonna buy one, or maybe like Disneyland. But no, they're not gonna buy one because the insurance on them is gonna be ridiculous, dude. Someone's definitely gonna get hurt on one of them. Sue the fucking place, and that's the end of the fucking one wheel segue, dumbass. Oh yeah. It's it. the same reason why I want an electronic bike, but we'll never buy one. Because also, hey, dude, I was mentioning earlier that it was negative seven degrees out. I'm not going out in the winter. I'm <laughs> yeah. not buy. I'm not spending three grand to get like three months of use out of this thing. <laughs> Jesus Christ, it's negative seven degrees out there. Yeah, I, don't, I don't know how he does it. Dude. It makes it's it, you know how it's fucking 47 outside. Yeah, it's like it 30. felt warm here today. Yeah, it, it was actually no, today. Was, today was nice, but like over the last week, yeah. No. What I'm saying yeah. though is like I'm, I'm never like I think electronic bikes are really cool. I want one. If I lived anywhere else, I would buy one immediately. But I'm not gonna buy something here that half of the year is, you know, it's just in a fucking closet. Yeah, yeah it's I useless. Wanna, I want to well, move up to Michigan. <laughs> nah, dude. Nah, that's too cold. That's way too cold. Um. All right, what else we got? We kind of been jumping around here. We got oh, the new Sennheiser HD twenty closed back headphones, super expensive, but these look sick. Dude, all Sennheisers are always super fucking expensive. Yeah. Oh, they have some kind of like budget esque. They got some cheap ones. Headphones. I mean, the, like their most their most popular one I would think of is eight eighties, and those are like what not even three hundred. Well, I know I mean, that, that's that, which is not expensive. Three hundred, which is expensive, but not expensive when you consider the ones we're talking about are like three grand. Yeah, these are really expensive. Now the eight hundred S's, which is the one that you see on like, um, they have like the grill on it, and you see them on like like Marcus Brownlee has them. Like these are like high end audiophile headphones. That, like you need to really drive them, but these are closed back, so you're probably not going to need to drive them too hard. And it's just going to give you more of a concentrated sound. I want to listen to them because I listen to the Sennheiser HD 800s and they sound so fucking good when you have like a really nice uh, uh, amplifier to them. But I just don't think they sound that expensive good. You know what I mean? Like they don't sound yeah. $3,000 good where you can get like a really good pair of... Uh, I mean, you can get like, like what? Plain R ones. Yeah, or you can get like Bay, you know, Bayer. Go get those 880Ts for a couple hundred bucks. That sound amazing. There's yeah. like, there's a lot. There's a flood of products in that like two hundred to five hundred dollar market these, that would, are amazing. These I would consider like the Yeezys of headphones. These are like the <laughs> Yeezys of headphones. I mean, like they they they're gonna sound fucking great. They look amazing, but you're just gonna have to pay for just because you have those. You know what I mean? Like you're paying for that specific headphone. Um, you're not going to pay for six times the price of performance. Yeah. There's a lot of diminishing returns in audiophile anyway. Now, what they say is there's Gorilla Glass on the, the – that's how they cover it, which is pretty cool, but I'd much rather have wood. I mean, there's a lot of different yeah. things here that – Glass like, would look really sweet, but then it's definitely it, not a pair of headphones that I ever take out of my house, right. which is also the point of close backs to me. Right. Yeah. All right. What else we got? GoPro. Uh, oh, that's not it. GoPro is leaving the drone market. They're pretty much done. They just laid off a hundred of uh, hundreds of jobs leaving drones. It sucks because the Karma is actually pretty cool. I saw one um, over Christmas break. My cousin got one. Uh, it's actually a pretty damn cool drone. But you know they got in trouble when they were falling out of the sky and hurting people. That DJI just kind of killed them. Let's yeah. be. Let's DJI's be real. DJI is killing the game, just period. 
They are well. They're killing it, insane. but they're 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 at that point where like drones are too so niche still, even still that it's just going to be a monopoly. Like if it was DJI or GoPro, like it's just one of those. It's too niche. Yeah, DJI for there got to be. It. Yeah, there's too. It's too niche of a market for there really to be multiple big good products. If GoPro, I mean, the Karma could have could have been the budget drone that everyone got, but they just had that issue and. It, you know, it's too bad because the Phantom or not the Phantom, the Mavic, which is the small DJI one, the image quality is not that good. And it's a little bit more expensive. I think GoPro could have had that market. But it actually like, flies is the problem. Yeah. <laughs> but in terms of like the high end, like what film, uh, you know, cinematographers use, they're all DJI. Yeah. Uh, well, they also have that DJI also has that new one, not the Maverick, but the. The even cheaper one. I'm trying to remember what it's called now. Yeah, I, it's I, like the Maverick, but it's like it's like this big. You know, it's just it's tiny. You can use it inside. Spark. That's what it's called. The spark. spark. Yeah, that thing seems cool too. Image quality seems terrible, but just the idea of that it seems kind of cool. I, so, I mean, that you can just play around with inside. Yeah, but it's four four hundred dollars. <laughs> it's expensive for that time. I mean, if you're gonna spend that much, you might as well go up to like I don't know. Uh, anyways, D-Link is the latest company to get an early start on the 802.11 AX routers, um, uh, 11,000 megabits per second internet speeds, Wi-Fi. Uh, this is what the new AX, the new AX uh, band kind of does. Yeah, pretty dope. I'm probably gonna yeah. get one as soon as they come out, man. I, I need I need to up my Wi-Fi game in my apartment. It's trash. Well, I mean. There, it is. It depends too, though, because to be able to actually use this, you have to have pretty much at least gigabyte fiber. Otherwise, you can still just rock like a twenty three hundred AC, and that's yeah. probably going to be good enough. Yeah, I want to. I definitely want to upgrade my internet game pretty soon to get like the highest tier internet, and then get like a nice Wi Fi. Uh, because when I have like like even when it's just me and Kate, like I'll have my laptop on. Um, and my TV, uh, the TV in the room, like the Wi-Fi starts to split a little bit too much already just from there. So I just kind of want really? to introduce, yeah, I just want to start to introduce a little bit more, you know, yeah. it's all like what? my, my, my laptop pushes 4k, my TV pushes 4k, my, the phone what's, pushes pretty, pretty, you know, a lot of bandwidth. And it just what's your router? Too much. I just use Comcast, whatever the Comcast. Oh yeah. Is. Fuck that. No dude. Upgrade. Yeah. yeah. It's on. I don't have a, I, I was going to say, I, I don't have any of these problems. Market. I only have like a ac 1600 like nope. that that thing's already fast enough that it can hand like an ac 1600 not even going to ax which sounds amazing that thing's i got that thing for like 80 90 bucks that can handle like 800 on wi-fi 800 up and down on wi-fi no problem with multiple connections yeah i need to like, uh, get a router yeah get a get a real router it will your life will improve because yeah. it'll actually be able to use everything that it's supposed to because that's yeah. that's how they sucker you in with a lot of them is uh you know especially like the things straight from comcast spectrum all of them they're like oh yeah dude we'll give you 100 megabyte down internet or 120 120 but uh by the way the router that's built in with it can do like 60 60. yeah no my, my router <laughs> i've been looking to get a new one but like i was looking at like the nighthawk and they want like 300 bucks for that thing and oh like, dude you don't even my, do that my router is fine but you know i kind of want like a good router anyway so maybe i'll just get a good one yeah dude if you got i think yeah you got like 120 120 seriously like look into anything that's like eight ac 1200 or 1600 that's that's still going to be overkill and you can find them like 100 bucks less yeah. easy well we gotta make another trip to best buy sounds like uh the new intel nook this thing's dope dude uh, so what it is, it's basically an Intel chip, Intel core with Radeon Vega graphics on the little tiny ass device. Dude, this is your Mac mini, dude. I don't think, I don't think you it need to is, go anywhere else. It is, but I want, I want them to actually come out with it. Like I want Apple to come out with it Yeah. because until then you can get out Mac OS on this eventually, nah. I'm sure, but it's going to be a bitch nah you you want a native mac one if you're yeah you, i want a native want one mac os because like you can do hackintoshes and this would be perfect for it if it didn't have the the reason why you want it which is the amd graphics included into the chip yeah if it wasn't a new chip you can make a hackintosh of it easy but since it's a new chip fuck that 
I have done that before, like I've helped do that before with Ryzen and like you can, you can make a Ryzen Hackintosh, but it's, uh, you want to kill yourself the entire time you're doing it. Yeah. If you got like an extra month to set up a Hackintosh. Yeah. I don't think it's, uh, I, I don't, I don't know. Then if you, if you get this thing, this nook, I mean, you pretty much are going to run like a small windows operation. Maybe it's like a, I mean, it could be like a little streaming box too. Dude, you know as I mean? a nook though, this thing's nuts. Like yeah, it, it's absurd. It's pretty sick, man. I mean, well, it's no, because KB Lake, the KB Lake chipset, Vega M. Um, and I saw they were they were vocals. using this to they were they were there were some benchmarks for the i7 version of it with the proper Vega, like the top the top line one of the nook. Yeah, they were they were running you know Wolfenstein two at like forty frames. Really? Like still nothing amazing, but yeah. That's like crazy. it will it everything they threw at it played at least over 30. That's like crazy. not a whole lot over 30, but it played it over 30. Yeah, we're in a we, pretty crazy time, man. Which that's insane for you know integrate well in pseudo integrated graphics. No, that's awesome. Except uh I think the name is a little bit off. When I hear Nook, I kind of think it's like a Kindle or a like an ebook reader or something. Yeah, you're right. That, yeah, you're right. But that was that kind of fits though, because that was the point of the Nook originally. I mean, it's it's a Mac Mini clone for better terms. I mean, it's a it's a computer that's this big. You know, you can fit it in your hands. Yeah, but I see what he's saying. It kind of yeah, Nook it does it does taken. sound like a Kindle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not really like the actual device I'm talking about. It's just the branding, I guess. That I'm yeah, yeah. About. It's like it's taken. You know, you can think of something else. <laughs> yeah, all right. Yeah, it's pretty pretty cool though. Uh, this thing's cool too. So this is a eight hundred dollar belt that an old person would wear if they fall a lot, and it's basically an airbag. And um, you know, it dude, it works, man. Like Holy they sh shit. they show it on uh on the floor, and it just knows when you're when you're about to hit the ground, and it just deploys and it protects your hips. That's fucking awesome. This is going to be awesome, and also probably if it ever actually launches the most sued fucking product in the world. Oh, yeah. Because all I'm saying is people still can't even figure out airbags in cars. I don't what? trust them to figure out airbags on what? my hips. I'm sure what, we'll do, you, what they'll do is... Can you imagine, like, some old dude... Okay, so you're falling for... You're old as fuck, all right? You get one of these belt things because you're scared to death of breaking your hip and not being able to walk for the rest of your life. So you fucking... You're just walking along and you're trucking, and all of a sudden, like, I don't know, there's a fucking piece of lettuce in the floor that you slip on. And because your house smells like cabbage anyway. And you fucking <laughs> slip. And you fall forward. And when you're falling forward, you're like, thank God. Like, the whole time you're just thinking, thank God I bought this dumbass belt. Oh, my God. It's going to save my life. And then, like, and right before you hit the ground, it deploys, pushes your hip up, and pushes your head straight down into the <laughs> <laughs> that is what I imagine happening. So old people are going to have to buy the combo kit, and it's going to be like the belt, the safety helmet, and the helmet. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think they're well, definitely they're definitely going to put like on the packaging like this will not save your life. <laughs> like, do not yeah. rely on this. This is well, you know, I don't think like that. Like I think I think there's a lot of places they can go with this that would be amazing, but it's going to take a long time because, like I said, they can't even figure out airbags and cars because for an airbag to work you basically have to shoot it off at like what you know a thousand pounds of pressure yeah so that going into your hips gonna hurt like a bitch no no but that's like, <laughs> that's a like moving vehicle <laughs> i know but like until know, they Jerry's like even like if it's smaller though you know it's got to be smaller but once dialing that in that there's still a possibility of you're in a position where your bones are so brittle they're gonna break from a fall you still got to have that shit so low that how is this even going to deploy in time? Jerry, uh, Jerry's having, having thoughts of like was the old people falling and the shit like popping out so quick. It just like <laughs> just turns, all, it turns like all of their hips into dust. Yeah. <laughs> it immediately like, just like obliterates everything. It's like bone. They meal. just explode. <laughs> yeah. It's like spontaneous combustion. No, it's, it's pretty cool, dude. It's pretty fucking cool. I like, I mean, it makes sense because, in that situation, like if you're falling and you're old, I mean, you're not, chances are you're not like cruising towards the ground, you know, it's more of like a slower kind of tumble, like a, like a Shaquille O'Neal kind of fall, you know how he falls, he kind of just like slowly hits the ground 
And in that case, I think uh, the airbag. The problem I think about it is that no one's gonna want one because they're so fucking ugly. I mean, this thing is. Who's gonna put that on their fucking hips, man? Uh, they'll. They'll. I think they'll figure out a way to like have it underneath your shirt or something. Yeah, I don't know, bro. Like, because like I feel like most people would have it just underneath their shirt on their like above their belt on their waistline, so the shirt covers it, so you don't see it, but it's still able to deploy. I mean, Wayne, Wayne, do you not really just know any old people? They don't give a fuck. <laughs> too, they, yeah. wear, they wear fucking fanny packs. They got those huge ass welding goggles they put <laughs> over their regular glasses, you know? I don't like, know, they, man. They don't, they don't give a shit. I don't know if you're I don't know if you're you can convince like someone's grandma to put a fucking airbag on her hip. It's still well, that's, I, that's a lot. This is this is a function over form generation, okay? Yeah, I don't think I could also convince <laughs> grandma to stop fucking getting the same goddamn perm in her hair she's been getting. <laughs> but it's still like they they don't care they don't care if that shit doesn't they wear a fucking necklace with a fucking button on it i'm just saying like i think the, I think the problem <laughs> with this device is that by the time someone really is gonna want one it might be too late they might have already fell and, and fucking <laughs> shattered their goddamn hips and then they're like god damn i wish i bought that goddamn airbag <laughs> you know no one's gonna be also like the, the fact that their v's airbags. is kind of hilarious to me like, like when they turn it around, it's just two V's and it's just like, oh, this is. Or you can put it on your crotch. This is not area. an indowendo at all. Put it on your crotch area. And anytime someone tries to kick you in the crotch, the fucking airbag deploys. <laughs> it's just fucking. <laughs> it's just this is, like this is the future <laughs> of NFL right here. <laughs> it just fucking pops out and shatters their shin bone. Then that's it. <laughs> their white leg is broken in half, and you're like, "That's what you get, motherfucker." You <laughs> thought your, you were gonna be funny, and nope. your crotch is just steaming with that like airbag <laughs> dust. Yeah, because uh, it deployed. It, yeah, okay. <laughs> Wait, we should probably stop talking about this. <laughs> uh, this is the Samsung Pen Nine. It's a two-in-one <laughs> device, touchscreen with an integrated pen inside. It's pretty pretty cool. Now, what you were saying was cool. Yeah. If no, this, this was okay. released for Mac, but yeah. It when you close it to tablet mode, it was in iOS. But when you close it to laptop mode, it's back into Mac OS. That yeah. I'm on board for. No, that's that's exactly what I thought when I saw this. Because especially it's a Galaxy tablet. That's what the hardware is. Yeah. And then it just has a keyboard on it. And that is my dream. Is like okay, it's an iPad Pro with a proper keyboard on it. You can get rid of it. You can bring it up and it's here's Mac OS. You turn it away to like write and do things. Here's just iOS. It's not getting any input from that keyboard. Yeah. So it, it you're not going to have any messes if it, if you bring it up like that. I don't know. I think that could be cool. Yeah. Be a bitch to actually make work, but I think that would be insane. Yeah. I, well, I would love to see them do it. I just don't think yeah. that Mac would ever do it. I don't think who so knows? either, but like they're, they're the ones who need to do it if anyone's going to actually do it. Because yeah. trying to run this thing as a Galaxy tab with Windows and then it folds over if it turns into fucking Android or like, like if this sold a lot, I, you can expect Apple to try to figure something out like that. And especially because it has it like pen, in, like the idea of a pen or pencil integration is like the core of it. Like Dude, this Apple working pencil, is amazing. The Apple Pencil and the iPad Pro combo is like I love that combination. But I just want Mac to get over their fear of two and ones because i know they hate them but like yeah i don't know you why. i think there is a i think there is a way that we haven't quite figured out yet that just it would work said. perfectly just what you and said that's and what apple that made pencil, me think of apple pencil slides into the fucking device and you can flip the screen over and then it's an ipad or or take it off or whatever i think the flipping over is a lot better uh and then when it's in an upright position then it's mac os dude i would absolutely love that shit i would fucking buy one right now like I while it's while it's up, if the touch screen doesn't work, the pencil doesn't work. It's yeah. just Mac OS, and then you flip it over, and it's full touch screen. There yep. you go. Yeah, but I wouldn't buy one with Galaxy on it. <laughs> no, sorry. Or Samsung. this or this hardware necessarily, because I don't think this is beautiful hardware by any means. But like when I saw this article and saw the idea of it, that I don't know, that just screamed at me. Yeah. All right. Now we're getting into our last topic, our deep topic. And uh, it's a story, and then we kind of go into it. So NVIDIA GeForce Now Windows app can transform your cheap laptop into a gaming PC. I've been using GeForce Now for the past, like, three months now, and it is fucking awesome. The fact that I can play PUBG on my Mac laptop, and it doesn't even, like, 
it doesn't touch the battery. It doesn't get the laptop warm at all. It's literally just displays an image that you can control. And it's awesome. And now it's coming to Windows, which I don't know why it took so... You would figure it would go to Windows first and then Mac, but I guess, I don't know. I guess they wanted to kind of grab then, the Mac audience first and then move it over to well, Windows, which kind of makes sense. Well, the thing is, the Mac audience actually needs it more than the Windows audience because right. the Windows yeah. audience, you're like, oh, I have this banging ass PC. Right. Mac audience is like, I have this banging ass PC and I also have this Mac. Yeah. That I can't play goddamn shit on. So, but now you can because the GeForce, yeah. it's a little, it still needs a little bit of tweaking. Like the, the there is a little bit of input lag. Um, and there's a little bit of buffering that goes on, but it works so good when it's, when it's good enough where I can play PUBG on it, which is pretty crazy. You know how fucking shitty that game is to run. And I can play it on max settings at 1080p, uh, and it runs 60 frames per second. What they do is it's just, you just rent, like you kind of rent right now it's free on Mac. So there's not, there's no cost at all. Um, but you kind of rent like a supercomputer and they just stream the image over to your laptop and it runs really well. And the question I want to ask is, do you think that cloud gaming is the future? Do you think this is going to be the way that we all game? If they can iron out iron out the kinks, do you think that the gaming laptop goes away and we all just kind of stream games and play them that way? I think af after using it, I think it could be, man. It's, it's really fucking impressive. It uses no resources at all on your laptop. Uh, you don't have to install anything and it runs so well. It looks great. I, I can only see it getting better from here, even though right now it's just like, like it works really well. And I'm, I was surprised at how well it worked. Now I like rely on it to play games when I'm home, you know, PC games when I'm home. Cause I don't have my, I don't have a home theater PC yet. And I'm, you know, it's not, I don't think it's ever going to replace native gaming, but I think there's a big use case for it here. Um, but I don't know. I don't know. I wanted to know what you guys think. Do you think, would you be interested in something like that? Where you wouldn't have to buy a gaming PC. You can just rent like, I don't know, maybe 10 bucks a month and you can play pretty much any game, high settings, just stream it over to your monitor. You know, I don't know. Uh, wait, you mean from your gaming PC, stream it over to a no. place? To, oh, from somebody else's. From their like big server oh. farm. They just, you just say, okay. <laughs> I pay 10 bucks a month and uh, you still have to buy the games, yeah. but that 10 bucks a month allows you to stream those games uh, from like a virtual PC over in their server farm to whatever you're using. You can use a laptop, you can use a PC, you can use a fucking Nook, you, anything that basically has a processor on it. It's pretty I dope. Think... Go ahead. All right. Uh, I think that uh, that does initially sound like a cool idea. But in the long term, it would actually probably, it depends on how long you did that for, it would end up costing you more money than actually just building a good PC for yourself. I see but, this as... But there's no upgrade cost. You don't have to upgrade your PC. Yeah. You True. Know? True. I, I would can, honestly, I, can I sell my computer's resources for gaming power and be rewarded in NVIDIA coin? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> You can expect that to happen in the year 2020. Can someone use my gaming computer when I'm not using it to stream their cancer VR chat and I get paid for it? That's no, that's my that's the future I want. It's all Nvidia, dude. You're leaving it up and, to Nvidia's farm. And can you watch it? <laughs> <laughs> can I get yeah, can I get paid to let someone else use my gaming computer while I sit there and judge them and possibly record it and put it on YouTube? Dude, that's like that's that's the new Twitch right there. Like that's the new Twitch. Yeah, so I don't know. I think I'm thinking like do would I would I use that service in place of a gaming PC? It I would I don't know. I would not, to be honest with you, because you have to also think about like latency. Like it's not latency. that yeah. bad. Well Yeah, there is still latency though. Yeah. There definitely yeah. is. And there's definitely I think that, times yeah, where I, it's, there's like a little bit of buffering. Like it's not perfect, but it's and, only going to get better. And also, do you think that latency is not that bad for you because you're like right next to it? Like you're not that far away from your PC? I, I don't know where so the PC is. 
I don't know where oh. what it's a you it's know he's streaming it on his MacBook. Yeah. Oh, I thought yeah. you were streaming from no, I thought you were streaming it from your no, no, PC no. In front of you, too. I borrow one of their virtual PCs that is like a GTX 1080 Ti. Like it's got the works, and I can set all my settings to max, and it runs 60 frames per second. Um, and it just I can play it anywhere. You know, I don't have to worry about a gaming PC. The problem is, is that like you said, there's a little bit of latency. Will that ever go away? I don't know. I don't know if we if they could ever get it that good. But there's right also, now, it's well, playable. There's, it's definitely playable. I think there's also going to be a niche that's like me who's going to keep a gaming PC because I want my ownership. I, I, that's why my gaming PC, it's mine. Yeah. If something breaks on it, I can fix it. And same thing with games, things like that. But for most people, I can totally see that taking off. Yeah. And also, I'm a developer. So, yes, I'm always going to have a bomb-ass computer even if I have a MacBook, regardless. So I can, it doesn't matter. It doesn't affect me, but for everyone else, yeah, dude, I can see that taking off. Now, what about this? This is a good idea, right? I Especially if you idea. get it working on like iPads or like other things like that, you know, cause that's, I mean, that's what kids are getting. They're getting super dope phones. They're getting super cool tablets more yeah. than they're getting laptops. Like no, you get works. that shit on, you get that shit running on a Chromebook. Oh, it works on everything, dude. I don't know if it works on Chromebook, but I know, there's other services that they're meant for tablets. Like you could just, you just get a controller and you can play like Witcher three, you know, 1080p max settings on your fucking tablet. Now there's latency. Like there's all that, those issues that come along with it, but it's still like an early development thing. The thing, this is the idea that I came up with, with this, with this idea. What if you were a company, right? And you leverage this technology to kind of like, you have your own little server farm and you charge like 15 bucks a month and you could allow people to rent games and just stream them onto whatever device and they don't have to like they don't have to install anything you know what i mean they don't like it's just a literally just a way to test new games before you buy them i think that could be a really cool idea that a lot of people would be interested in too like there's other use cases other than just like just having a virtual pc but i can tell you right now where it's at it's pretty impressive. And when I first tried it, I was like, holy shit, this actually, like, you can actually play a game. Like, I thought the latency was going to be really bad. Um, I thought the the lag was going to interfere. And there's pockets here and there where you're kind of like, get, especially in PUBG, where like every moment is critical. Um, and now you're up till 4 a.m. playing it every day. <laughs> and now I just can't <laughs> fucking stop because it's a GeForce now. They work so good. But I don't know. I, I think it's an interesting question to pose. Anyways, that's it for the tech portion uh, of the show. Go I was, got one I more was just going. Yeah, I was just going to add one more thought that uh, I do. I do think that it would be a really good thing for people who are wanting to get their feet wet in the PC gaming. Yeah, that don't either have the resources or have the uh, know how to build their own PC, or they just want to see what PC gaming is all about. That well, would be a thing for them. My other my other thought too, kind of related to that is. What would you rather have, that or an Xbox? Yeah, that's the thing. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, what... even once you start paying for this, you could probably buy six, seven years worth for the price of an Xbox One X. The way they're going to charge it, I have a feeling is going to be per hour. It's going to be like a dollar an hour or two dollars an hour or something like that and if that's the case oh, they do I don't it like think pc it'll banks work. Uh. i don't think it'll work if they charge it like that if it's a monthly ten dollars 15 bucks a month i can see people being like you know what i don't i just want to play PUBG. i just want to play counter-strike i just want to play league uh i don't want to buy a gaming pc i just want to use my macbook or i just want to use my chromebook that's a good that's a good fucking proposition to have especially since it works on wi-fi really well because i do it all on wi-fi i don't connect ethernet or nothing man it just streams wi-fi straight to my laptop i, I was playing it in the fucking starbucks and um it was working really well so i think if they just keep making it better they gotta fix uh the amount of times um the latency kind of appears because it's pretty much like zero latency but for like five minutes in certain periods you'll get like a millisecond off. You know what I mean? Where it's just like, it's just enough latency to be a little bit weird. They need to fix all that Maybe stuff. Maybe if you don't try playing PUBG in Starbucks, it'll Bro, get a little I'm, better. I'm about to say, you fucking look like you play PUBG in Starbucks. What the fuck? People are the right novels. It was specifically, and for, like a... <laughs> specifically for research purposes, okay? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Oh my god! Imagine no, if fair, I got yeah. a chicken dinner, playing Starbucks, fucking PUBG, dude. I'd be the king of fucking PUBG. Anyways, dude, Wayne's Wayne's like now job. those kids that you used to see at the coffee shop who would like bring their computer to play League of Legends. <laughs> dude, I can't wait to talk about PUBG in the gaming section. All right, guys. Hope you enjoyed this tech portion of the show. Remember that gaming segment airs Mondays. This airs Fridays. Make sure you head over to our Twitch Tuesdays. and our Twitter. At, or uh, Tuesdays, I'm sorry. Our Twitch and our Twitter at No Life Digital, as well as our Instagram uh, website soon to come. I promise you the website will be up this week. It should be up this week. And uh, it will have tons of VR chat on it. <laughs> there you go. It's just strictly VR chat. I uh, hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please leave a like. Make sure you subscribe if you're not subscribed. And we'll catch y'all later. Bye-bye.